The Lord be with you. I am Pastor Miguel Arenas, and it's great that you're here in this special day. Today is the day of the birth of the church, the day when the Holy Spirit comes and moves around. So let's bring the Holy Spirit here. So not only welcome to you who are here, if you are guests among us, please, you are in the right place. But we also would like to welcome our brothers and sisters who are worshiping with us online. Today will be a glorious day. This is fantastic that you made it. An applause for you. You made it. Please. This is our first 10 a.m. worship service. So thank you. Thank you for being here. And today certainly is the day of the Lord. We have our candle of peace and unity. A candle that reminds us that we need to pray for those places in conflict. Not only lands and territories, but also families, friends, acquaintances. We need to pray for unity. We need to pray for peace. And Brooklyn comes to us this morning, lighting the light of peace and unity. My brothers and sisters, I invite you to stand up as you're able so we can participate in the call to worship. Unite us, Holy Spirit. Like the rush of the wind, we sense God's presence flowing afresh throughout the world. Unite us, Holy Spirit. Across the barriers of language and culture, Christ's message of love and grace is heard. join in our opening Pentecost hymn. The words we sing are a translation of the original Latin, whose lyrics have been sung as the opening hymn on Pentecost Sunday for over a thousand years. The tune is the familiar doxology. <laughs>
around you. Do not be afraid. God's Holy Spirit brings you healing, comfort, and hope. You are being prepared to serve God in mighty ways. Rejoice. God's Holy Spirit is with, with you always. Amen. for Cindy, hospitalization for an infection. Kathy Hoover, lifts up her granddaughter, Adriana, for peace and strength. Now the invitation is for the kids to come forward, so we invite them to come. And we're going to sit down here. 
around this beautiful trail. <sighs> okay, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. <coughs> Thank you for being here. I have a question for you today. Do you know what we're celebrating today? <laughs> Why do I ask that question? And, oh, oh, they didn't know until, okay, okay, okay. So we're celebrating Pentecost today. So what, what does it mean? Does anybody know? Oh, when the Holy Spirit came. Yes. Something else? Ah, you forgot. Well, we celebrate that and we say that it's the birthday of the church, right? It's the birthday, not, not, not Charlton Church. It's the, the whole global church, the old entire church. And God sent us the Holy Spirit to help us to understand who God is. So let us pretend, let us pretend that we go back to that particular day when God sent the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to ask you something. Would you mind to close your eyes and listen to the following sound and see if you recognize it? What can you hear? Yes? Okay. What else can you hear? Can you hear something? Well, let me tell you. What happened is that that day was a big wind. Can we make a sound of the wind? And look at what the word says. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violin wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. So, you know, one of the wonders that I have, it was they were talking because they spoke different languages. And I'm sure that they greet each other. And what do you say when you greet? Hello, right? They say hello. But others say something different. So, for example, in Hebrew, does anybody know what do we say? Shalom. Does anybody know what do we say in Spanish? Hola. Hola. <laughs> uh, does anybody know how do we say peace in Arabic? Arabic. Salam. How do we say it in Italian? Pace, pace. How do we see it in Nepali? Because we have a Nepali congregation here. How do we say it in Nepali? Se yeah! <laughs> <laughs> wow! Aha, uh -huh. now I have one that you don't know. How do we say it in German? Does anybody know? How do we say peace in German? Yeah! Thank you. Thank you. So imagine these people are speaking different languages, but they were able to greet each other because of the Holy Spirit. This is awesome. And God sent this Holy Spirit. And even here, we can feel the Holy Spirit. So this is the invitation that every time, every time when we need the Holy Spirit, we can ask the Holy Spirit to come and the Holy Spirit will be moving around us. So let us close our eyes and pray together. Dear Lord, thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to be our teacher and guide. Help us to listen and obey as he teaches us how to tell others about Jesus. In your name we pray. In your name we pray. And what do we say? Amen. Amen. So you're going to be walking here and say, come Holy Spirit, come. 
One, two, three. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I invite you to stand up as you're able. As I said, the peace of the Lord be with you. Please offer signs of peace to your brothers and sisters. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them the ability. And so is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Beloved Church, on this Pentecost Sunday, we have our United Methodist logo as part of our worship setting. You may not know this, but there is meaning behind our logo. The two flames represent the two churches that came together in 1968 to form the United Methodist Church. Two churches who were at odds on several issues came together to be united in their love for and service to God. For over 50 years, these flames symbolize that we are one, united as the family of God. And today, those flames continue to spread their fire here at Charlton Church, symbolized by the red glowing from the cross. So on this Pentecost Sunday, we celebrate that the Spirit of God is working in and through us to spread His love and compassion with all the world. Alleluia. Alleluia. My brothers and sisters, we continue with this sermon series about home builders in faith. And today the invitation is to make room for the Holy Spirit to move and in our family relationships, in our church, and around us. And Pentecost is the day of the Christian church birth. The day on which the Holy Spirit, the divine promise, is present with his company, with his comfort, with his power to help people who are confused and need guidance. And there is a popular saying that says, if you want to walk fast, walk alone. If you want to walk far, walk accompanied. And Jesus doesn't want to walk fast. Jesus wants to walk far with us. And Jesus chose his apostles and walked with them for three years. And today many of us have been walking with Jesus for much longer than those three years. Many of us inherited the church as part of family life. Others learn about God and his church through the years. 
But what we have learned, in large part, it is up to us to allow Jesus to walk with us alongside us and to let go of the need to walk alone and quickly. Jesus promised the disciples the presence of the Holy Spirit. And that day came on Pentecost, the day when people could live the Christian life together in that community. And according to the account in Acts chapter 1, Jesus reminded the apostles of his teachings prior to his ascension and asked them to be together, not independently, nor individually, but as a body. And Jesus commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, of which he had already spoken to them on several occasions. But what was this promise that they had to wait for? And I have to tell you, waiting is not fun. Does anybody here like waiting? Because if you like waiting, you need to talk to me. I need to learn how to do that. It is difficult. Waiting is difficult. And Jesus urged his disciples to be patient. Another difficult word. And have faith as they waited for this promise. They didn't know when it will happen. But they had to wait with trust and faith. So Jesus had lived with them for three years as I said before. And in the maximum separation had been three days he was in the tomb. And now they had to. And they had to wait with trust and faith. And during this stage of waiting, they will see the fragility, the inconstancy and personal inability to convince others of God's existence and work. And I guess that there were days of a lot of pain and little comfort. Because this is waiting. That we have to wait. It's hard. It's sad to say. To live away from someone. When you have always had. That company. And held for so long. It's difficult. And finally. The Holy, the Holy Spirit's comfort. And presence. Mark this time of waiting. I imagine that. Just as we tend to give more value to the things we lose and then recover, the disciples experience something similar. They were waiting for this time. And that time came. And this time will not be marked by Jesus' physical presence, but by his omnipresence everywhere. Jesus wanted to be everywhere. Not only through his power. But also through us. His children. Because whether there is a child of his. Who believes there I am. Said Jesus. Upon revising Jesus' promise, we discover the following. And let me read it this again. Uh, chapter 1, verse 8. And it says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be witness to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, in Samaria, and all the end of the earth. I like to emphasize the word power. And look for its meaning in everyday life. How do we use the word power? In what types of areas do we use and we see this word power? Because
because of its frequent use, we cannot ignore the term power at a, at a social level. What type of power are there? We usually hear about the power of politicians, the power of wealthy people, the power of the church and others. The misuse of power could cause tremendous damage to people. Not only to people, but to countries and churches and society if this power is not used for the glory of God. So let's see. I'm sure that many of you like movies. By the way, July will have a wonderful sermon series, Mo Charlton at the Movies. So be ready to watch those movies and reflect on those movies. That was a commercial. Um, <sighs> Pixar is not paying any attention. So let's see the plot of most films that we see. They revolve around themes of revenge and hate and the exterminations of one's neighbor utilizing any, any type of power and resource to, ca to cause damage. Do you see how dangerous it could be the use of power in the wrong hands. But the Bible speaks about another power. What is this? When the presence of the Holy Spirit appears, we speak of power. And the New Testament uses the Greek word for power, dunamis. And it appears 120 times in the New Testament. So it was a very important word. And the word loosely refers to a strength, to power, or ability. And it is the root of the English word dynamite, dynamo, and dynamic. I know that word. And as you know, I was born in this little town, Amfnaun, in the south of Chile, and it's a coal mining town. And I remember when people talk about the use of dynamite. And it is even used by miners to make large holes and extract the minerals. And in certain circumstances, it happens that at a certain depth, a stone appear that are so hard that you cannot continue digging at a certain level. So what do you do next? Miners create a hole of a specific size and depth, a location before they put dynamite in there. And the explosion allows these large <coughs> rocks to break and open new coal mines thanks to the power of dynamite and its waves. Waves of power. Following Peter's preaching on Pentecost, if you follow the reading and if you don't know the story, I invite you to continue the reading. Peter has a strong, strong preaching that day and he received the power from above causing an explosion that led to the conver conversion, look at that, I have never done this, but led to the conversion of more than 3,000 people and I'm sure that, I'm sorry women and kids are not mentioning here but 3,000 people who were believers and converted into Christ because of this big explosion that was caused by the gospel. Do you realize the power of the Holy Spirit? The explosions and expansions 
and expansive power continue. So much so that thanks to this power, we know and believe in God. Why? The answer lies in the power of the Holy Spirit. This explosion allows many of us to feel part of this community of faith called Charlton Church and to feel that God has a place of work and a place of mission for our lives. Why? The answer lies in the power of the Holy Spirit. This explosion allows you to do things in your Christian life today that you may never have thought of doing before. Why? The answer lies in the power of the Holy Spirit. This explosion compels us to gather here today in this holy place and remember all of those men and women from different places and languages who felt something special. Why? The answer lies in the power of the Holy Spirit. This explosion compels that here in this place we are gathered people with differences and we are able to be in one name, the name of Jesus Christ, and be together thanks to the power of the Holy Spirit. We are not the same. But even though we are not the same, God is inviting us to be together by the power of the Holy Spirit. However, I must, I must say that in certain circumstances, we move away from God's presence. So what happens? One of the things I observe when I make a fire in our house, fire pit, is that if I remove some of the pieces of burning wood from where the large fire flame is, in a few minutes, it will begin to go up. Because it has been separated from where the power of fire is. Friends, if you are not united as a family in the power of the Spirit, if you move, move away from the fire of the Spirit, its flame will go out and be extinguished. If we do not Feel that this place interprets us, that it speaks to us, that it calls us to be in communion, then we will begin to turn off. I imagine that more than some of us have experienced that time when we fell far from God and far from the community of faith. So how do we build room for helpfulness? How do we build room for helpfulness with those who are going through these moments? As I said before, here we are people that come with our own selves. We're not the same. We are just like these people in the Pentecost day with different languages, expressions, and I'm not talking about Espanol, I'm talking about different languages of interpretation in our own lives. So how do we build room for helpfulness with those who are going through these moments? Do we judge? Or do we help? By the power of the Spirit to guide and to pray and to comfort. There is no better medicine for the soul, my brothers and sisters, than returning 
to the fire of the Holy Spirit. See, that divine flame that motivates us, warms us, and moves us to do incredible things. That holy flame has all the power because it is in that power that God acts in our midst. A new eruption comes to our lives and within us, mobilizing us to a more active and a more powerful commitment to the company with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Did you hear me? I said the word commitment. Today, the day of Pentecost, I ask you, are you willing to do it? Are you willing to continue to be part of the fire of the Holy Spirit? Are you willing to use the power that God has given you through the Holy Spirit to continue serving God with all your heart and with all your strength to the church? Willing. Jesus invites us today to review our Christian commitment carefully. On this day, as we remember all of those in the early Christian church who received the presence of the Holy Spirit in their lives. Let us move. Let us act. Let us feel the presence of that power and let us prepare for an abundant harvest of God that will come as a blessing from the one who moved us today to gather here and worship him. Let come Holy Spirit and fill us. Because when we hear that power, we can feel the sweet, sweet, sweet spirit in this place. Amen. I invite you to stand up as we sing together. challenges us to see the world in new ways. With hearts burning with a passion for sharing God's love with others, let us now bring our tithes and offerings that they may be used to bring comfort, justice, and peace in our community and throughout the world.
who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. As United Methodists, we share an open table where all are welcome and encouraged to share. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. In the beginning, your spirit moved over the face of the waters. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turn away and our love fails, your love remains steadfast. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. At his baptism in the Jordan, your spirit descended upon him and declared him your beloved son. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release the captives and recovering of sight of the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you will save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. But the baptism of your his suffering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, the, deliver us from slavery to sin and death, and make with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, and broke the bread, gave to his disciples, and said, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day he raised him from the dead, it was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of this, your mighty act in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the blood, blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood and empowered by the gift of the spirit. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, showing forth the fruit of the Spirit until Christ comes in final victory and you feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As you know, the invitation is to all of us, and I invite the servers to come forward.
to stand up as you're able so we can join our voices in we have heard your call. <laughs> Beloved church, go out into God's world filled with the spark of the Holy Spirit. Let love guide your actions, spread the peace of Christ, and remind everyone you met that each one is beloved child of God. As I bless you, you bless me. So in the name of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. God bless you all.